Hello, my name is Priscilla Birch. I knew early on that I wanted to be an artist. It was in the summer between kindergarten and first grade. I just knew that I wanted to be an artist. But I already had a hurdle to overcome and it took me years to do it. Um, when I was in kindergarten, I was standing outside uh, waiting for my mother to pick me up holding a painting that I had just finished. It was dry. It had a band of blue at the top for the sky and it had a tree in the middle and it had green grass on the bottom. And a kid came up to me and he said, you know, that's not the way it goes. The sky goes all the way down to the ground. And I looked at him, didn't respond and thought, everybody knows the sky's up. And that whole little conversation, I didn't respond to him at all, um, uh, cast doubt in my mind about, you know, whether I could do this, was this a good path to pursue? And so for uh, many years, I just didn't do any artwork. Uh, my family uh, provided materials for it. I played around with it, but nothing. Um, serious until, well, let's see, my mother gave me a, a, a brownie camera when I was uh, eight years old. And she also supplied some uh, red rubber molds that you could pour plaster into. And I really liked that process. And that was sort of all I did for many years until sixth grade when, uh, the sixth grade teacher, a home homeroom teacher, provided a an independent study period for us, and I found some National Geographic's, one of which had photographs of murals from Roman baths with nude women in them, um, lounging, sitting, standing around. I started drawing them, copying those. And the next thing I knew, my mother asked me if I'd like to have private art lessons, which I said I, I would. And um, I worked with a local painter for uh, a number of months. I was introduced to charcoal drawing, introduced to plaster uh, casting, three piece molds. And that was my first really um, time when I felt free to do what I really had wanted to be doing. Then in seventh and eighth grade, we had really good art classes. We hadn't had any before in, in the public schools I was in. And I was introduced to perspective, to elemental uh, color theory, to blind, lino cut print, printmaking. And I also joined the photo club. Then um, I went to an art oriented high school and did more photography, worked in the print room. I did my first oil painting and then went on to college where I majored in art history. They only had one studio class that was a printmaking class. And um, the art history uh, classes were really, really good. That was, that was, you know, basically my, my education until I came out here to go to art school. I, I was raised on the East Coast and I came out here uh, because I wanted something that was more expressive and freer than the school catalogs that I looked at from the East Coast. And I spent two years going part-time to California School of Fine Arts, which was, uh, is now was San Francisco Art Institute. And um, then I ended up at Cal getting a master's in painting. Tell me about, um, I'm curious because so many really amazing painters and artists um, taught um, at Cal, including Squeak Carnwath and- After my time. 
Oh, that was after your time. Can you remember any of your? Yes. Joan Brown. Joan Brown was there too. You know, I, I'm not just sure when she was there. The, the, there were no women when I was there. Um, there was Carl Caston, Bob Hartman, Glenn Wessels, uh, Earl Loran, Harold Paris. That was that 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 was about it. Um, but it was a very very good uh, course. I it, it met my needs. Out of those teachers um, or instructors, who who do you think influenced you, or can you give an example of something that sort of changed your course or opened up the path a path for you? Well. I'm not sure that any of that happened. Um, I was already into working abstractly. And um, so was Bob Hartman and so was Carl Kasten. Um, so I'm sure that environment supported what I was, what I was doing. But I, I don't think they, they both became um, Bob Hartman and Carl Kasten became good friends. Uh, we were friends throughout. Um, and uh, uh, I really loved their work, but I don't think it influenced my work all that much. Yeah, I notice I, I know that your work is is abstract and, and that's the abstract. I mean, your abstract work that you do today is what I'm most familiar with. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought it was really interesting when you were telling, telling us about how you you painted and copied the Roman bath images and the figures from the National Geographic. And I think that's marvelous. I mean, we all have like a watershed moment like that where something visually captures our imagination mm -hmm. and and we have to study it and learn it and own it by making iterations of it over and over again. And obviously that was figurative, but I'm wondering like, what, when did you decide or find yourself sort of in the abstract camp um, and why? My first oil painting was a still life in high school. Um, I didn't paint during the college years because I was too busy. Um, though um, my mother helped convert a bullpen that was on the property we were living on into a studio. And she had also helped me uh, make a dark room for a high school Christmas project in our house. Um, so I wasn't, I was exploring imagery and I'm, I'm just trying to think, uh, uh, she took my sister and me to a big Matisse exhibit in Philadelphia. Um, that was certainly not abstract. She took us to a Georgie O'Keeffe uh, exhibit in New York. That was not abstract. Somewhere in there, I saw some Franz Klein work, um, Jackson Pollock. Uh, I guess maybe um, in high in in college, art history classes, twentieth uh, century art history classes. I think probably that's where I was introduced to it, and um, I liked it philosophically. Uh, I liked it because there was a lot of paint involved. Um, I liked it because it was somewhat inscrutable. Um, I liked it because I could translate it into uh, work that interested me. Um, I did a series uh, of small oil paintings that were from images that I held in thought of Sierra rock walls. Um, and you know, it, just, it just worked for me. And I still, my work is basically abstract, not always, non-literal, not always, but mostly. I'm really impressed with 
how your mother was really persistent in cultivating your artistic talent and interests. It sounds like she left you alone when you needed to be left alone, but gave you what you needed to facilitate, you know, your, your talent. I, I, I think you're right. Um, she, she did do that. She, 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 she was very supportive. Um, and she did leave me alone and let me do what pretty much what I wanted. You're, you're right, right on. Yes. How wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it, it really was wonderful. Actually, um, when we went to that Matisse exhibit, I must have been 12 to 14 someplace in there. And after looking at the exhibit, I went up to her and said, Mother, I could do this. And she looked at me and she said, well, I wish you would, dear. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Oh my God, that makes me want to cry. Um, yeah, did she, did she harbor any sort of creative desires that never got fulfilled or? Yes, I'm sure she did. Um, um, in, when I was eight, nine, some time in there, she took a class in tray painting. I don't know, it was kind of a vogue at one point. And that was the only thing that she did that I was aware of. Mm -hmm. But um, after I left home and my parents split, she went into New York and took art classes and I've got her work. I love for me that your work is composed of lines, many lines and threads. And whenever I see your work, for me, it feels like a, a tapestry. Oh. And I love the texture. I know it's you do two dimensional work for the most part, but for me, it has so much depth and surface. Thank you for saying that. That well, that, that that's wonderful. Um, yes, line. Uh, some of my earliest paintings that I did at Cal, one of which got sold, um, and I don't ever been able to find a photo of it, it was basically linear. It was oil painting, um, uh, lar large gestural lines. Um, and that was before I knew of Joan Mitchell, um, whose work I really relate to a lot. Um, she didn't influence me because I didn't know about her, but um, I really like her work uh, a, a lot. Um, you know, I've been working for quite a few years with some images of grasses, which have these long leaves, thin linear leaves. And much of that um, uh, line feeling comes from those grasses, um, purely, purely photographic. And um, one series that I've been working on, uh, sketches, which is 14 or 15 pieces to it, uh, in, a, in addition to, you know, all the, uh, what I almost call painterly quality, although there's no paint involved in these, uh, there's a digital background of the dark lines, which are the grasses, and then there's hand applied oil pastel. Um, in addition to the visuals, in addition to the push and pull and the tensions, there is sort of a subtext to that, which is a kind of understated comment on our contemporary society and how it's falling apart. A lot of tensions, um, people uh, uh, fighting and not getting along and blowing up and whatever, you know, stuff that goes on um, in our culture these days. And my my task in in uh, doing those pieces, and I'm I'm still working on this concept, is to take what 
looks like a rather chaotic substructure, the dark digital grasses, and bring them into a state of balance. Um, and uh, uh, these pieces are divided into sort of two different groupings. One is sort of a classical balance. Um, and there's a lot of activity going on, but there's not horrendous tensions. And another part of this the second half is a lot of tension that looks like the pieces are gonna pull apart, but they don't. Also, um, the camera plays a, a, a huge role in my work. I was given this brownie camera, which I love. I loved my mother's Kodak camera. I loved the apparatus. I just loved the mechanics of that camera of my mother's. Um, but the camera provides me with images with which I can work. I work with photo images. My work is photo based in that sense. I work with photo images. I don't work from them. Um, I work with them. I, uh, and the camera gives me the source of images that I need to work with. And so what you're saying is you actually use the digital image in your work and paint over it or with it or modify it? Or I have a piece here that I could show you. I have to get up to get it, which has um, uses the photograph in a somewhat different way. Well, this, this is a pencil drawing and it is based on a photograph, um, a panoramic, a, a series, a, a series of four by six images of fall colors in a little valley in Southern New Hampshire. And um, it's an example of uh, using a photograph, but the photographic image is not there at all. It's become abstracted in the process of working on it. And I've, I've done um, quite a, a few pieces that fall into that uh, sort of category where there's no photo image at all, but several steps back there was. And uh, this, was, this was the first, first example of that. I did three pieces this size that look like this. It, there, it's linear. Uh, it, I don't know if that comes through in the, in the image itself, but uh, goes from left to right and then another line left to right until it fills up the whole whole space there. And those represent uh, these trees packed together and they just form these various uh, lines. That's lovely. It almost feels like a language too, like I'm reading a page in a book that I don't understand uh -huh. the bed or the... I, I have um, a work that does relate to language in a sense. At one point, um, my nephew was in the Peace Corps in Morocco. And uh, just before going, I started a notebook that had uh, lines from left to right. Uh, as uh, Arabic script is. And I, I have quite a few pieces that use that sort of signature. And, well, it's just, it, it does relate to language.